You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Really appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day. And uh, I think this is going to be really useful to people today because um, we're hearing more and more about accuracy and mapping and people trying to achieve that. But it can be very expensive to do so. It can be. So if we can get that cost down for folks, that would be really helpful, I think. I think it would as well. So thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you as always. It's a very interesting time today. Why? Because we're going to be talking about the different workflows in regard to uh, getting highly precise uh, maps because this is something that a lot of people are struggling with, especially a lot of people that are very good drone pilots that want to break into this and they're wondering, you know, what's the most practical workflow to actually get this highly precise information? And I think that it's going to be really valuable for people. So um, today's show is sponsored by our landing pads. Uh, Good news, you can actually get our landing pads on the same site as our upcoming mapping classes. If you go to bit.ly forward slash drone you mapping classes. Yes, that's plural. All right, let's hear the question. What's up drone you? This is Aaron Cropper. Love the show. Um, I actually saw somebody post this question on the, the drone you page, but what would be a good entry level RTK or PPK GPS for somebody that's just getting into mapping, but wants to get survey grade accuracy. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you, Aaron. Like I said, a lot of people getting into mapping, trying to get accurate maps, models, measurements are wondering the same thing because GPS can be really expensive. Well, I think people need to understand why GPS is expensive, right? Because even if I have uh, like a Leica uh, RS18, um, or a Trimble R10, right? Those units, even though they're thirty thousand dollars, some like anywhere from twenty to thirty thousand dollars, those units, without a cellular connection, will provide as good GPS information as your cellular telephone. Now, when it has a cellular network to connect to and can provide uh, corrections from the nearest base station at a distance that's a reasonable baseline, I've always said 20 clicks, and a lot of surveyors have said that's really far Mm. um, for a baseline. I know that's kind of like maximum practical, um, and I know some people need to see a tower within 10 miles. But when you have that network access, you can then get down to a really, really, really small point like let's say a centimeter or two on the X and Y, which is lateral, and maybe down to a centimeter on the Z axis, which is elevation. Just a quick point here. Elevation is typically the axis of GPS that has inherently the most error, right? That's why people need GCPs to conduct volumetric measurements and survey grade quote-unquote work as ASPRS has not actually posted what survey grade photogrammetry looks like, um, even though they've said it's, you know, uh, some people have said sub half a foot, sub, Hmm. you know, um, some people have said two-tenths of a foot is quote-unquote survey grade, but ASPRS really needs to put out this information on what, you know, survey grade photogrammetry looks like. Okay, photogrammetry. Under the old system, they've got to have guidelines. They do have guidelines. Yes, they do. So I would think it would kind of match that. With, let me just put it to you this way, Um, with a very good acquisition plan, with enough GCPs and checkpoints with a traditional survey grade GPS, you will always be within those limits if you mark your GCPs correctly, if you organize your GCPs correctly, if you shoot the GCPs correctly, if you shoot the checkpoints correctly, and you know how to read a quality report. You're going to be just fine. It's a lot of correctlies. Oh, yeah. And I did that on purpose. I figured. Because <laughs> <laughs> you really do need all those things like to do that. Um, now, that being said, a long time ago, we were really pushing the Reach RS system because it was a $1,500 unit. Um, but in using that unit, in fact, Parker Hill has one, uh, Jason Danello has one, uh, even with Jason, who is just absolutely blanketed with network access in Florida, like mm-hmm. no, no mountains to block signals, you know, right. cell phone signals for days. 
Um, he's in like the best possible area to use GPS. Right. In fact, Florida has its own state sponsored, um, uh, what is it called? Correction network. It's, re- mm. it's really good. Now, that being said, setting up that, that system and getting it to work properly, Jason and Parker and one other person have said is just not really practical because it takes so long to set it up. And there are a lot of areas where there is no network coverage, right? Okay. There's a similar problem with the P4RTK in that you may not have network coverage. In fact, you may have to subscribe to a network like SmartNet, which is Leica's uh, network essentially, to have those corrections. That's, that's a big what if, right? Huge what if. The Reach RS, in my opinion, is not a practical solution as of right now. Could that change? Yes. I hope it changes. So what is it that takes so long to set up? With the Reach RS, because you you said it's it. all about like the you got to set up the state plane coordinate system, the network it's going to connect to. Um, also, from what I hear, and like I honestly heard so many bad things about it, I decided not to test their system hmm. because people were just saying it's just so convoluted how you set it up. It's not like simple and clear. It's not intuitive. And I'll say. If Leica thinks their system is intuitive, y'all are smoking some good stuff because it is not intuitive. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about a receiver. The handheld receiver is about this big, about the size of my chest. And maybe not, you know, width, but height. <laughs> width, okay? <laughs> maybe not depth. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's huge. It runs on Windows. It's a clunky system. It doesn't work well. Trimble is no different, in my opinion. I've, I've worked with both. Um, they are they are complex systems. So if Trimble and Leica are the easy, intuitive systems, I don't even want to know what Reach is looking like. I Like, really. Um, now, guys, you should probably go out there and test Reach yourself. I don't want to, like, kill their, their business here, but there is a reason why GPS equipment is really expensive. It's because you need infrastructure to mm-hmm. actually get that to work. Now, we're talking about RTK, right, real-time kinematic. Real-time kinematic needs a cellular network, and it needs some sort of corrections network. Okay? And we need those two things. What happens if you don't have those two things? That's happened to me. Then you got to move on to the next option. That's right. And typically, that's one of two options. So if you're out there with a traditional RTK system, you may take static points. You would have to know how to take static points. I'll be honest with you, Rob. We've had that $30,000 GPS now for a few months. I do not know how to take static points. Why not? Why because it's so complex. Oh, okay. And we need to create a video series on how to use these, which we're working on with Eric, mm-hmm. as you know. Yep. Um, but we're also working on a rental system through Leica. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of that system, but let's just say that you would have the ability to do RTK, PPK, and PPS. Most people don't even know what PPS is, and that's a good thing. Anyway, <laughs> that being said, it's going to provide the solution of if I don't have cellular data X, if I don't have uh, network connectivity, you do Y. If I don't have cellular data and network connectivity, you do Z. Hmm. So, I mean, it's it's a perfect algorithm. Like, you're going to get your accuracy no matter what. One way or the, So, is that pretty true? No matter where you are, one way or the other, you can get it? If no. you have the right equipment? And you know how to use it. So, like, if you have right. the $30,000 unit and you don't have RTK corrections over the network, yes, you can pull static points, post-process them in some system like uh, Trimble's Pathfinder system, and that's literally the definition of PPK, right? Okay. But his question is, is, how do we get the best data for the cheapest amount of money? That's true. Y- your answer is, I can't believe I'm saying this, your answer is arrow points, uh, renting them, you can rent them from HTS Solutions. You can rent them from. Uh, there's a couple of people you can rent them from, but uh, Russell White, he he's someone that we're hoping to work with here soon on renting lidar. Russell White has uh, arrow points for rent. I think he's one of the only people that rents arrow points. We are adding arrow points into our training, but huge caution of warning. Okay. If you are a drone mapper and you do not have an RPLS, uh, which is you're not a licensed surveyor, and you want to provide this data to a licensed surveyor, I have heard that – and this is pure speculation, okay? I have heard that some surveyors will not sign off on Arrowpoint PPK data because they're essentially signing off on third party of third party. Hmm. 
and they can't like verify it, trust it. You know, they're Just not going to too much risk as far gonna, as they're concerned. Exactly, they're not going to yeah. sign off on it. Now, this is speculation. I have not seen this. Um, I don't know if it's true or not, but I do want to put the warning out there as someone warned me. So in that particular, that being the case, you want to have that relationship established and understood in upfront what you're going to be doing and, and are they going to be willing to work with you? I think you always need, whenever you're going to get your stuff signed off by a licensed surveyor, uh, one thing that I have been learning um, because we finally got someone to uh, sign off on our California surveys is that you have to detail the workflow. Mm-hmm. They need to know how yeah. you are using the equipment, what equipment you are using, and why. Yeah, because you have to have a baseline understanding of uh, of all that. You know. Sure. Um, that being said, if you are a traditional surveyor getting into mapping, your traditional survey equipment will be fine. You can use a Phantom Four Pro. And your traditional surveying equipment with some great GCP targets, like our landing pads, for example, um, and you'll be okay, right? And we talk about GCPs, checkpoints, and the ultimate verification of your data in our mapping class. That being said, I'm just going to run through a couple scenarios really quick because I feel like I haven't done this. And this is on my new uh, article through Drone DJ if you want to check it out. But let's say uh, that I have a P4 RTK, okay? If I have network corrections... Over a cellular network, I can get RTK, but I still need to verify that data with checkpoints or some sort of GCPs. Anyone who tells you they're mapping without GCPs is just flat out lying to you. There's no way to verify the accuracy of your data when there's no physical georectification in your map. It's just not possible, okay? So if you have a P4 RTK and no cellular network, no corrections, what do you do? You're kind of screwed if you don't have arrow points or some other traditional equipment, okay? So let's go then into what if I have a P4 Pro and arrow points? Well, you don't need a network and you don't need network corrections because what you're going to do is map those arrow points in your map. You're going to need five and two checkpoints, okay? Then you're going to mark those in your map. You're going to georectify your map, correct it, boom, you got your map. The only thing I really don't like about arrow points, and I'm sure they're going to hear this, is the time it takes to get your data back hmm. from them because they have to literally post-process oh, your okay. data. That's why that's the difference between PPK and, and RTK. And how long is it taking them? From what I've heard, well, it used to take them up to a couple days. It's down to a day. Nah, that's not bad. It's not bad It's really not bad. But from what I've heard is that the reason it can take from anywhere from five minutes to 24 hours is dependent on the nearest base station where you mapped and essentially how much data is going through that base station. Mm -hmm. So essentially it's like a bandwidth allocation issue and it's not their infrastructure, so it's not something they can really control. Gotcha. I could be completely wrong about that, just FYI. Um, But this is the word on the street. As to why it takes as long as it does. Mm -hmm. And typically the word on the street ain't wrong. (laughs) <laughs> That's. <true. laughs> I think you guys know what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> so that being said, if I have a P4 Pro and arrow points, I don't need cellular data. I don't need a network. And this is probably the most reliable and consistent workflow for mapping. The ultimate consistent, reliable workflow for mapping is probably going to be a P4 RTK and a couple arrow points. Because you always have because they're kind of cross checking each other. Well, you're gonna have the checkpoints to verify your data. Number one, yeah. but number two, you always have the backup, right? If I go out there and I have no cellular service or I have no network connection, I see. So from a workflow standpoint, having yes, both, you're yes, covered. Yes, of course. That's yeah. why I think it's like the ultimate mapping solution. Gotcha. The ultimate efficient, cheap Dave Ramsey way of going about this, <laughs> as Bill would say, no debt. Uh, yeah, is buy a P4A, <laughs> right? Phantom 4 Advance, because you don't need all that obstacle avoidance crap. Um, and then just use arrow points and rent them until you can buy them. Um, and Which I'm, makes sense to begin with, because the question did ask about intro-level GPS system for someone, and I quote, just getting into mapping. Yeah, and I think right. arrow points are your answer. And because, renting them. And renting them. Yeah. yeah, don't drop the six grand until you're ready to go all in. I will say, and having a very deep workflow-based analysis of how to get you know these, these highly precise maps, I keep coming back to arrow points. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I got to give PJ mad credit, you know, because he was using arrow points in the construction mapping course and in the cell phone tower mapping course. 
That being said, there's one critical piece that you need to do for your arrow points. You need to number your arrow points, okay? Because um, oftentimes they don't really come in numbered. <laughs> and it's a lot easier to remember which one was number one, two, three, four, five. So uh, Glenn Johnson was the one who showed me. He just took those garage markers, you know, those reflective markers, yeah. and he just put it on there. And he's like, now they're numbered. Voila. I was like... You go, Glenn. Of course, you, you buy a set of our landing pads, and they're numbered. They are numbered as well. So, Because GCP organization is really important. In fact, someone just told me at the last class, they're like, I love how you have scale constraints on your landing pads. Yeah. I was like, well, they're not that big. They're not going to offer, like, the best corrections. He's like, yeah, but it's something. Right. He's like, and you know how many times these old farts forget something? He's like, and I'm an old fart, and I'm saying this. <laughs> I'm like, dude, whether you're 60 or you're 30, you forget stuff. Like, quit this labeling yourself as old. All you're doing is hurting your own image internally. There's That's deep. A, yeah, sorry, I'm getting all philosophizing. <laughs> anyway, uh, guys, that is going to do it for us today. I think the answer to that question is very simple. The cheapest, most efficient way to break into drone mapping and get highly precise maps is to rent uh, arrow points. Use a Phantom 4 Advanced or a Phantom 4 Pro um, and go at it. Uh, and if you are in the high volume business, then you're probably going to be using a P4 RTK and arrow points, unless you already have traditional surveying equipment, then you're probably just going to use that. And you already know how to collect static points and how to post-process them. Um, but most people may not. So I think that answers hmm. today's question. I think so. In depth. I hope so. But obviously, if not, let us know. We are open to follow-up questions. We really are. We don't get many of those, by the way. I can't wait for GPS technology to get much cheaper. Mm. Because imagine if you had RTK GPS in a car. Autonomous driving would be so much more reliable. You have down to the centimeter accuracy. So you better have a good network. Yep. Right. And voila, <laughs> so. the problem of the day continues. <laughs> exactly. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today, Rob. I love that point. <laughs> My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>